Maybe you could get somebody in the audience to log in. Parker, is it loaded for you? Can you can you check audio? It won't load on my phone. Oh my god! I'm so jealous of this. This fucking interface. <sighs> Bro, Chris and Logan are having like. It's good. Okay, yeah, what's up? It should do it in a sec. Yeah. Anyways, all right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Once again, um, if you haven't done attendance, please do attendance, please. Oh, yeah, it, I mean, yeah. QR code, if you need the QR code, link is in the Discord, like always. So if you, again, if QR codes are not your forte, feel free to do that. Um, I'm going to give some quick reminders and announcements and information, and yeah, and then we will go ahead and start with the workshop. So first of all, um, we don't have that two-week break like the schedule normally has. It's just a one week break. So progress update number two is next week, if you didn't know. Um, so make sure that you're getting all of your like screen recordings, uh, progress stuff in general to your team leads so they can put it all on the slideshow, get that stuff ready to make y'all look cool and good and credit you and yeah, um, and continue working now to avoid crunch in the end. That is the goal, is to not crunch. Um, as a quick little reminder, our links channel has a lot of cool stuff, and now it officially has our itch.io page on it. We have an itch.io page. It will be populated every semester with the games from that semester, so that's cool and fun. But there's also weekly schedules, so if you were kind of blindsided by uh, progress update number two next week, there's a weekly schedule there. There's also our YouTube where we put all of our previous streams, so like if you missed a meeting and you can't be there on Twitch, our Twitch link is there as well. If you miss a meeting and you can't be there on Twitch at that time, you can go watch the meeting if that's what you want to do. There's also our mentor application in there. So if that's something that you feel like you could do or that you'd want to do, feel free to fill that out. Um, we're not checking it as often. So if you want it to be checked quickly, try to reach out to an officer. Um, but yeah, speaking of ask a mentor and mentors in general, um, we have a forum for that. Uh, it could be, it could get a little out of hand because it is a place where you can kind of post things on game development and get help. And that's can be really enticing. Try to keep it for stuff that's like club related, you know, for the most part. Um, and make sure that you're following the submission guidelines. That stuff is there to get you the proper answers and the best answers that you can get. Um, so if you've already made an attempt at a solution, give that, give all of your software, give as much detail as you can and try to make the issues specific. So like a good thing is, and I think that this was the sample one that I put up. It's like, how do I make a pause menu? That's not as great as 
Okay, so I'm trying to make a pause menu. I'm following this Brackies video. The Brackies video is using Unity 2017.4 point whatever, and I'm using 2019 point whatever. How do I script this line? Because for some reason it's different. So like stuff like that, does that make sense? Specific versus like general stuff. As much information and detail as you can give, the better uh, answers you will get back and the quicker answers you will get back because it avoids that like mentors having to prompt that kind of information. Um, today, workshop day, oh, I'm so excited, yeah. Um, the workshop, as you all should know by now, maybe you don't, is how to market yourself in the game industry. Um, super helpful for kind of any industry that you're going into if it's a difficult one, um, but it will be specifically tailored for the game industry. If you have a resume and portfolio and you haven't already pulled that up, pull it up if you'd like to. Um, you can kind of like reference and cross-reference and whatever. Oh, what's up, Gurungu? What's up? Um, there's gonna be a Q&A afterwards. If you still want to use that link to put your questions there, which if you feel like you're gonna have a lot of questions and forget, feel free to like rapid fire them in that link. The link isn't Parker's most recent announcement um, because we're gonna be leaving questions till the end because maybe Yoon will cover something that you might have a question on. Um, yeah, I already said, helpful just be, being an adult with a job um, if you're not going to the game industry. Um, and make sure to be respectful of our speaker. I know that you guys are oh so respectful and yeah, woohoo. But I will say he's been given permission to throw buckets of lava and buckets of spiders that we have under this desk. Don't look, but they're there. So act up, you might get the spiders. All right, are there any questions? Any questions about? It's not, okay. I'm just wondering where you got that picture of the link from on the previous mm -hmm. one. Sorry. Google Images. So I've never seen that render and it looks official and like. That's the wrong person. Every week I Google top games 2023 because all I play is Clash of Clans. And then I find transparent images on another tab. I've never that's seen where that's from. Design. Real honesty hours. All right, for real though. Questions, last minute attendance filler routers, please fill out attendance. Questions, comments, concerns? That's not about Legend of Zelda? All right. Well, then we will give it up to Mr. Yoon. Woo! Oh, that's loud. We're going to. I don't need that. I don't need that right now. No more. Put it away. Put it away, Hannah. Make it stop. Make it stop. All right, there we go. Perfect. Okay. Is that good? Yeah, that's good. All right. Okay. Shh, shh. Oh, all right. Hey, guys. What's up? How y'all been? Long week? Oh, God. Okay, cool. We got we got this. I'm going to use this as a clicker. Uh, How well can y'all hear me? I don't like using this mic. I can hear you. Cool? All right, awesome. Hopefully my voice doesn't go out by the end of this. Cool. Who here wants to work in games? Want to show hands? Okay, cool. Awesome. Let's go. Cool. Well, there it is. Going gold, breaking into the games industry, or in other words, securing the bag, um, whatever you want to call it. All right. So you probably want to know who the hell I am. Um, hopefully Hannah hasn't said anything so particularly weird. Uh, hi, I'm Yun Lee. Um, I am a tired gamer. And I have been recently freed from college as of this past winter. So let's go graduation. Um, no, no, don't clap for me on this. I don't, nobody wants to be an adult. Um, <laughs> all right. So just a little bit about me. I'm former Panther Dev and VGDF president. Hello. Take a seat. Um, I'm a GSU GT alum. So I am one of you. I've been where I've sat, where you guys have sat right here in room 211. Um, currently I'm a production coordinator at PlayStation. Um, and I have applied to, I don't even know how many studios at this point, but I've received a couple of offers from Bungie, Activision, and what, Insomniac, and a couple others. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm credible for the most part, hopefully. Um, more importantly, though, I just really, really like fucking making games. Um, so let's just get into it. So things to, things to know before you apply, um, just setting some expectations and some context before you, like, get into things. And if you ever, if I'm ever moving too fast, just let me know. I'll slow down for you. Um, I know I can talk a little fast, but um, 
most important thing that you should know is that this is not an easy industry to break into. Most of you guys know that already. Um, this isn't to scare you or anything like that. It's mostly because, look at how many people in this room. Look around you. Look at your neighbors. These are all the people. This is just a fraction of the people who want to make it in, right? How many of you guys want to be programmers? Right, designers, artists, right, musicians? Yeah, look around you. Those guys are the people you got to compete against, right? Um, when you go and apply to a job or any in any field, right, there's going to be a million other other people who you have never met before who are going to be wanting the same position, right? Um, and that's not supposed to be something particularly daunting. It is supposed to be something that should keep you guys on your toes for the most part, right? Don't get too sloppy. Um, the industry is super saturated. Um, so you want to make sure that whatever you've got to show, you want to be very specialized and very ready to make yourself stand out to somebody who is looking through a thousand people like you every day, right? Um, and it doesn't really matter where you begin so long as you start somewhere, um, AKA right here, this is a great place to start. I started here, so um, Panther Dev is a great place to start. Um, and have standards for where you wanna work. But in this industry in particular, you don't want to get particularly picky. Um, and I don't mean that in terms of like, oh, work anywhere, take whatever you can get get the worst paying jobs and stuff. No, it's just a matter of there's not a lot to go around. So if you if you really, really, really want a job here, do your best to make yourself more open-minded on this kind of stuff. And remember, you're here because you want this. You want to work on games. You probably like playing games too. So do not let yourself sabotage. You don't self-sabotage yourself into thinking, you know, I'm not good enough for this. I'm not ready to do this. You'll miss out on a lot of opportunities in doing so. Um, so there are lots of roles in this industry. I've pointed out a couple of them, right? Um, we got generally, and this is super general, and there's a lot of stuff that I'm not covering here. So that's actually the whole theme of this presentation. There's a lot of stuff I'm not covering. If you want to have any questions, ask me later, or you know, Parker can handle it for me. Um, but we got programming, music and sound, production, art, and design and narrative. You guys generally know what all of this is, right? Probably the only one you don't know too much about is production. Um, suffice it to say, who here is a team lead? That's your job. You're, you're a producer, um, more or less. Um, and if you look here, we've got a lot of different delineations in those dif different categories, right? You've got gameplay producers for programming, technical artists, uh, tools developers, systems programmers, and that delineation trend happens for every single one of them. In AAA, particularly, you want to get specialized. Um, so if you've got like jobs, if you've got roles in games such as, oh, I worked on UI, right? That could be something for tech art or a graphic design, but maybe not so good for gr gameplay programming, right? So you do want to be a little more specialized um, and know what you need to work on. Oh, no, put that away. No, go back. There we go. Um, so for programming, C++, like I, I bolded it. Don't, don't mess around with that. You need C++. Um, Java, C Sharp, anything that you can get your hands on in that particular world, go ahead and do so. Um, and if you want, you can, I'll, I'll post, I'll have, I'll send these slides to Hannah so that she can share them with everybody later. Um, so if you want these, feel free, but there's a lot of different stuff that you can focus on and, you know, hyper specialize in even while you're working on games here, right? Um, before we really get started, I kind of want to know generally what the vibe of this room is, where everyone, where everyone's at right now in terms of their career and where, you know, things are. Um, so quick round of quick question round who here. Is this their like first time in the club? Like this is their first semester. They've never done this before. Get out of here, Logan. I know it. Come on. <laughs> um, okay, cool, cool, cool. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, how about who here has made a game here and has their name on those credits? I should see a couple more hands. There we go. How many of you have games that you've worked on, things that you have done in the past, have work experience in general? And I don't mean game dev experience. I mean like you've worked as a bartender or something. And you have thought about putting something like that on your resume, but have been intimidated because of the fact that you feel like those skills wouldn't be very useful. Yeah? Same hands. Fair enough. Um, so this whole workshop is basically to beat that out of you. Um, anything you've got, any experience you have is necessary. Go on, take a seat. Don't be shy. Go on. It's all good. Um, but yeah, any kind of experience you can get your hands on is necessary experience. So 
doesn't matter if you've only worked on like one main menu or you've done a couple of little bit of level design for one game and then kind of quit in the middle of the semester because you had exams. It doesn't matter. That's still experience, right? The only difference is how you sell it to somebody, right? How do you talk about it, right? Do you say, oh, well, it's nothing too big. I worked on like one title screen, um, added a couple buttons here and there. Or did you say, oh, I worked on the user interface for the main for the for for the player when they boot up the game. Um, here's what I here's the engine I worked in, and here's some other random details that I could easily fish up anywhere, right, to make myself sound a lot smarter about it, right. Those are two very different sentences. They say the same thing though, right? I worked on a menu screen, um, and so keep that in mind as we move forward. That's the kind of that's the kind of attitude we want to be seeing. This is something that, who here knows Ron? Like the name Ron Williams. Damn, it's been that long, Hannah. Damn, okay. Ron actually founded Aurora. Um, so he's he's old, old. Um, but when I was at CHCon 2018, I he handed out these little, like, cute little cardboard business cards, right? And he, he had everybody, like, write out what they did and what their contact info was. And I put, for my title, I put aspiring game developer. And he looked at me and then whooped my ass because, uh, well, this is what he said. No, you're a game developer. Have you worked on a game? Yes, you're a game developer. You're not a student game developer. You're not a aspiring or soon to be or hopeful game developer. You're a game developer. So for those of you who raised your hands for having worked on a game before, you're game developers. Don't ever put aspiring or student on there because all you're doing is degrading your own work, right? Um, no prefix necessary. All right, so moving into the stuff that you actually want to hear about, um, the nitty gritty stuff, this is probably where you want to take notes or something like that, whatever you want to do. Um, we're going to talk about the timeline real quick. And the first tip I'm going to go into is do not wait. Um, this is the number one mistake I see everyone do, myself included. Um, I've missed out on so many opportunities because of this. This timeline, as you're soon going to see, is really fast. Like this moves quick. Um, and as a result, you don't want to be caught on the wrong foot before you start applying. Um, case in point, it starts in mid-September. Um, so in mid-September, internships are typically, and I'm gonna I'm gonna speak in the context of internships, because I mean I imagine if I asked who is a student, all of you would raise your hands except Pascal because he's old. Um, but that's why I'm going to be mostly talking about internships in this case. If you are looking at internships or any kind of part-time job throughout the semester, typically mid-September is when they're start, gonna start rolling out. And typically these are companies like Riot and Blizzard and Epic. These three are usually the fastest to roll their stuff out. Um, regardless of what you think of any of them, that's just the timeline in general. Um, around October, most studios will have already let loose everything. So Insomniac, Sony, um, High Moon, That's No Moon, literally everywhere else has probably opened up all of their applications at this point. Um, so it is open season. Thanksgiving is when things are going to start slowing down. Everyone, I mean, how, how are you guys, ex are you guys excited for what is this? This is spring right now, spring break, right? You guys are happy about spring break, right? Looking forward to it. So are us workers. Um, we like our breaks. We like Thanksgiving and nobody wants to work during Thanksgiving, AKA your applications won't be seen in Thanksgiving, probably all the way up until like, New Year's next year, which is what this next slide is going to go into. Um, winter break, everyone shuts down. All studios, I don't care. Like, give me a name, they shut down. Um, so in winter break, everyone's out for holiday. Recruiting, that means HR and recruiting people, they're gone too. Your application, if you send it by this point, they're, they've either closed the application window or they're not going to look at this until like January 17th or 15th, mid-January or so. So you've kind of already, you, you're already late at this point. You're, you're playing catch up. And then around March, most people are wrapping up. Their offers are being sent out by now. People are putting, the, all the studios are putting their big intern group channels together. Um, so around March, things are, things are pretty much over. If you're starting now in March, that is, that's a bit of a problem. Um, you will likely not have a lot of opportunities coming up at this point. So this is what I mean by you need to move fast. Um, you can't slow down on this. Does that make sense? Do I need to stop, elaborate on anything? We cool? Awesome. Maybe you can go back to the, the resource and just the full way. The full one? Yeah. Boom, there it is. All right. Just gonna let people take their pictures. Anyone else? Pull out their cameras? Don't be shy. 
I spent like five hours on this, so their people better be taking pictures. <laughs> They're very nice. All right, there we go. Um, so this is going to be the longest section by far. If you have resumes out, at the, if you have resumes pulled up, I recommend you have them open because um, this is going to be long. Um, let's just talk about what a resume is in general, right? So this is your first contact, right? You've filled out an application form, and you have now you're now at the part where they ask you to insert a document, which is probably your resume, and now you're thinking, what the hell do I do? Um, this includes the what and when components of your experiences. So this think of this as like your character D and D sheet, right? This this is like all this is a summary of all your stats. This is what you've done in the past. This is who you generally are. So it's just like a think of it like your transcript, your college transcript, but a lot more fun. Um, and the content in these are going to they're going to differ super drastically depending on what role you apply for. So for instance. Uh, a programmer is not going to be trying to make their resume look particularly pretty. But if you are, say, a graphic designer, then, I mean, making your resume look pretty will only do you favors because that is actually showing off your skills in the job, right? Um, and note, again, I mentioned that you're applying with an application form usually, right? And you're not like just cold sending a e uh, resume to somebody. Well, you can, and we'll get into that later. But generally, you're probably going to be just doing an application form. Um, and with that, there is going to be a lot of information on that form that you probably don't need to put in your, in your resume. And we'll go in, into that in a second. But remember to make a million of these. Do not just wait with like, don't be like, don't be those guys um, not calling anybody out, but don't be that guy who makes like a game design product programmer artist resume all in one. Um, those of you who know, know. Um, so before we move forward, let's do some show and tell. Any brave souls want to volunteer up their resume for a case study? I fucking knew it. Get up here. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> or, uh, am I supposed to like have it on my phone? Is that good? Um, yeah. Like, because I don't have a physical copy. Sorry. Oh, Lamal, well, how's this gonna work? Uh, Hannah, I need your wizardry. And I can email it. I know Hannah's email, right? Actually, let's do that. Let's do that. Um, he's gonna email it to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, cool, cool, cool. In that case, Pascal, here, take a seat. You take a seat. Yeah. Yeah. Take a take a minute. Stretch your legs. It's gonna be a long one. Come on, Pascal. Yeah. Give me a thing. Sorry. All right. Has been sent. I'm ready. Yeah. You can go ahead. I just made it today, so I want to see if it. I want to. Oh, you made this for this workshop? Yes. All right, Pascal. I like that. I like the. I like the energy. It's rig. I love the energy. Let's go. I have. All right. See this? I pro you probably can't see this. Let's let's go look at this. All right. So, sorry, Pascal. Um, uh -huh. hope you don't mind. So, Pascal C. Wilson. Um, so. General show of hands. Does this resume look pretty? Does this look good? Like, does this is this pleasing to your eye? Right? Yeah, not not particularly horrifying to you. Cool. You then, Pascal. Congratulations. You've passed the first bare minimum. <laughs> um, it is not a wall of text. So, thing one thing to note here is that a big theme for resume talk is redundant information. Remember, you are filling out a form at the same time. Y'all have all applied to college. Y'all, you've done your Common App and you've done all that, right? Now think about the types of the type of information you put on there: your home address, your email, your all that, all that other stuff, right? That stuff you're basically going to be sending it again if you put it on this resume, right? Um, so keep that in mind. Like try to try to keep what is only strictly necessary on this resume because your your recruiter does not give a shit, right? Your recruiter gives you thirty seconds and then they're done. They're clocking out for the day. They got they got volleyball to play after this. They're done. So make it super easy for them to go through this. Um, case in point, they don't need to know you're in Atlanta because you're going to be telling them that on the form, right? And they will let you know. They will ask you multiple times, "Where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you at?" Even during the interview, like you'll be in your. I've been in like third level interviews, and they'll be like, "So where do you live again?" Man, I live in Atlanta. You've seen this like five times. Um, Another thing is for emails, 
try to avoid using your student email because your student email only lasts for so long after you graduate, right? So you probably want a written record of like all the correspondence you've got, you know, before you graduated and stuff. So if you haven't already, go ahead and make like a business email or whatever. It can just be your name and a couple of numbers behind it because that's what everyone does. But as long as you've got one, that's what matters. Um, phone numbers, fine. Um, it's not too big of a deal. But I'm missing something here, and that is the portfolio. Where's the portfolio, right? You want to put your portfolio front and center on this thing. And we're going to go into that in a second, so hold your questions on portfolios and stuff. Um, now, we're going to lightning round this real quick, Pascal. So education, um, this is perfectly fine. Note, where's his GPA? No it's way. not there. That's good. That's a good thing. Nope. <laughs> Y'all thought I was going to be like, nah, you need a, you need a 4.0. No you don't need a 4.0. Full disclosure, my GPA, when I graduated tech, was a 2.7. So... Case in point, you do not need a, they don't, most studios don't really care so long as you can do the work, right? Your experiences matter more than anything else. Um, case in point, going here, um, also for graduation date, small note, uh, you want to put when you expect to graduate. He's already graduated, so he doesn't need to worry about that. But for those of you who are still students, put expected graduation, because that's the only number they give a shit about. Um, they don't care what year you are. They don't care about any of that for the most part. If you're a freshman or a sophomore, that's that's gonna be a little different. Um, but yeah, second thing is put your, where, where, where are your projects? Where are your projects at? Uh, awards. Awards. And activities. Okay, this does not make it particularly clear to me, right, that these are your projects, right? If I only gave, think about it, like put a stopwatch on yourselves, 30 seconds, right? Try to skim through this whole thing in 30 seconds and pick out what you, what is important about Pascal? Could you do it? Would you be able to really know who this guy is? Probably not, right? Um, so try to organize it in terms of projects, your experiences slash awards slash accolades, whatever the hell you want. And then your skills go at the very bottom, which Pascal here has done. His skills are at the very bottom. Um, you can make, you can put your skills in any order you want so long as they're just purely relevant to what you're doing. I would recommend you don't put Discord because no studio with their salt is going to be uh, doing their comms on Discord. <laughs> Um, probably, hopefully, I'd hope that nobody is doing that. Um, unfortunately, they use Slack instead, which is arguably worse. But what are you going to do? Um, so yeah, this is generally pretty clean in terms of like where we are. This is well, this is well read. I can go through this in a hierarchy. Sure, some of the content is a little jumbled up a little bit. So it is a little harder for me to get to what I want. But generally, it's all the meat's there, right? Um, so good shit. Good work, Pascal. Thank you. Good shit. Let's go. Everyone give a round of applause to Pascal. Okay. Let's go. All right. Um, me and Hannah prepared our old resumes in case nobody was brave enough to do this. So I'm just going to quickly skim through this. Hannah, you want to come up here? Uh, but you're, you're going to do it anyway, aren't you? Yeah. Boom. There's your prompt. There you go. <laughs> All right, so what I thought I was doing with this, I thought I was doing it to him in short. In long Figma software, I thought that if I made this in Figma, it'd be like extra points. They had no clue. All that happened was I sent them an image. Games are creative. Re resume auto-reject software is, is not. They could not read this. Make sure that it's a document that software can read. Um, two, leave your personal anecdotes for the cover letter. I didn't realize that I could do that. I was applying to Epic Games with this, so I talked about my my love for Fortnite at the bottom. Leave that for the cover letter, and even in there, put it in a little tiny bit. There's also too many word. It's really wordy. You want, like, bullet points and, like, three bullet points max, and you don't really want the bullet points to be that long. Real word. A lot of words. Um, it's also, like, only two things. And I'm, I think I'm cooler than that. I could have put more on this, even at this time. Also, what the actual nuts is that? I don't know why I put that picture. That's not professional. Don't do this. This is. Let's go, Hannah. Thank you for being brave. Let's go. Um, one thing to note, though. So this style of resume, like this graphic, this nice and pretty looking version, um, you graphic designers out there definitely do try doing something like this. 
albeit, you know, no walls of text and stuff like that. But for you graphic designers in this room, you will want to showcase your skills in some way like this. Um, now for mine. Fuck. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I was once, I was once a freshman. Um, but yeah, this was like my sophomore year, so that'd be 2019. Um, yeah, so first of all, there's a lot of war crimes happening here. Um, what is that mission statement all the way up there taking all that space up? Like, what, what, what I am an aspiring game again, aspiring. crimes, crimes. Um, no solid direction, right? I've got projects here that have nothing to do with each other, they don't paint a clear picture of what am I actually good at, right? I've got one where I did a lot of Unity programming, another where I did like HTML JavaScript and it's a visual novel. So maybe like you got one that'd be great for narrative design and you got another that'd be great for gameplay, right? So it's not really focused. Um, second thing, where's, what's, my work res what's my work experience all the way down here? This makes absolutely zero sense, right? Also two columns, like don't, please do not ever do this. Do not ever make it two columns. This is like a, the greatest crime you could ever commit. Um, second greatest crime is to make it two pages. Do not make it two pages. I've also been through that, but I would, I figured I'd spare you from that one. Um, yeah. And also I misspelled competencies, um, which is very sad. <laughs> Please spell check your shit or grammarly. Use grammarly or something if you're too lazy for that. Um, here are our new and improved ones. So this one here is not my current resume. This is my like new, this is like, I think right before I applied to internships last semester, uh, last year. So this is like the one that actually got me in. Um, and Hannah is, this is the one that is going to get her in. Right, Hannah? Let's go, poggers. Uh, let's go. So um, as you can see, we've got the about me is, you don't need it. You can have it, you don't have it. Everybody you ask is going to have a different answer for this. Like, just do what feels good for you. Um, education, you know how it is. Um, projects up and up front and center, telling me, telling them exactly what they need to know and only what they need to know, um, and tailored to the different the thing that I'm actually applying for. So I think for this one, this was a oh lord, this is a production resume. So all of my all the games that I've led that have been the most successful, I put them on there. Um, I didn't put any solo projects on there. I didn't do any of that other stuff because that won't show off my skills as well. Um, work experience down there. And then all my applicable skills, just kind of dump them all in the bottom because quite frankly, if you're applying to a position, the recruiter's base assumption is that you've, you you have some of these already. So putting that on there is just kind of redundant info anyway. Um, and that brings me to tip number two, cut, cut, cut. Um, this is what I mentioned previously, they're human. They don't really have the patience or the time or the effort to spare to read through everything. So, you know, cut everything that has already been stated, right? Has already been there or things that they don't really need to know, just sharpen it to a point so that when they look at this, they'll be able to hone in on one bullet and they'll be like, oh man, this person really went hard on graphic design or something, or they made great music, fantastic. They can just pinpoint that. Um, so make it really easy for them. Second thing, portfolio. This will be relatively quick because I imagine all of you guys, so we've already done the show of hands. So like there are a lot of you who already have different, there are a lot of you applying to different positions, which means the portfolios will look different. But generally, what do they do? Resumes kind of get your foot in the door. They show people a general summary, but it's not very like, it's cold, it's clinical, it's numbers, right? It's just, this guy did this, and this is his name, and this is where he lives, right? Um, portfolio is where you actually put those things, put, you put your money where your mouth is, essentially, right? And whatever projects you've got on, those re on that resume, you put them up here, right? Um, and this is where they get to actually play your, res play your games and be like, oh my god, he's not actually lying out of his ass, he actually made these games. That's crazy. Um, and generally, if you apply if you not if you don't have a portfolio there is no excuse there is not really a reason you shouldn't be you should be applying if you don't have one of these ready to go already and not to say oh don't put your if you don't if you only have like one game don't apply because by all means please do that make a portfolio with that one game on it and there you go shoot your shot right um the important thing is that without this this is kind of your this is your cred this is your credibility um, without this, you have no credibility, there's no reputation, there's nothing for them to trust, right? Um, and generally, you can do this a million different ways. Like if you're a graphic designer, go and 
work on like go work in like i don't know what's a wix or whatever the heck you do right um make it using your make it use your magic make it pretty um and use like a template if you're not a programmer if you are a programmer if you want to just flex a little bit or you want some customization then yeah by all means go make a custom website bootstrap html css do your thing um doesn't matter what form it takes it just needs to exist um this can be an itch page for those of you who really don't want to go all that way and it's fine i have no people who have made it in with just itch pages um artists and musicians this is your bread and butter um this is more important arguably than anything else that you're about to see in this portfolio uh, in this in this whole thing so make sure you've got a place that people can just click wow there are all of their games and then you can play them um who here has worked on a game in unity unity's got a great thing where you can export your game as a webgl um for those of you who didn't know and webgl just means you can embed your you can embed, embed your game into a page on the web and they can just play it off the web browser um that won't work with every game but it'll work with some um but yeah just make sure you have one of these here's some examples of stuff that of portfolios that i've just kind of grabbed off the web um there's mine i haven't updated in years so don't look at it um itch.io example it's very good mitchell is a good friend of mine and they're very cracked at what they do they're a programmer um noah barry those of you who are familiar with celeste will know him as the uh, the person who did that massive player script um this is where he this is how he shows off his games this is very simple clean to the point they're all of his games you can click on and play them boom very simple um so moving on from that and if you have any questions on portfolio stuff specifically please feel free to ask me after this um cover letter it's not optional it's only slightly useless um and i'll explain that in a second so why do we need to write this because games surprisingly actually do care about who you are and how cool you are it's crazy um because you know we're making cool things so we want to work with cool people um this fulfills the who component if your resume and portfolio are showing what you did the cover letter is actually telling them they're putting a face to that name right it's humanizing you in this in the eyes of the recruiter you're no longer a bunch of text um so this is where you this is where you're saying why do i why am i applying to you why do i like you why why here's why i think i'm the hottest shit on the planet for your job um and generally this can be really annoying to write and so we're going to go into a couple of strategies on how to do it but trust me if you can follow some of these steps generally you will literally be stamping these out like nails um so here's the cheat code this is all you need on a cover letter three paragraphs nothing too crazy introduction introduce yourself talk about your background in the field so like hi i'm your my name wow it's like you didn't already know what it was um here's how long i've been doing this this is what i've made before and then you talk about why you're here right why do i want to work with your company right why do you why do i like you in particular why am i taking like the 30 minutes out of my day to apply to you right and why does why do the things that you make align with my goals as somebody who's trying to break into the industry right so for instance um a common really common like catch all phrase i see people saying is like for bigger triple a studios like riot or you know activision or sony they'll say something like oh uh you've got a diverse array a diverse array of games that you've put out and i think that would present to me a lot of options in it's advancing my career or my skills or whatever whatever you want to say just make it fluffy um and then what are you doing now right and this is kind of the thing that a lot of people don't think about as much but what are you doing right now or have done recently that pertains directly into this position right this instant um case in point here is a cover letter i wrote for bungie last year that did so this did actually this ended up getting through and this did get me an offer but you can see the general steps followed right here um and i'm pretty sure half of you can't read that so it's fine but you can look at the slides later but just know that generally that is where we're going on that um and the what we're doing now section here oh whoa um so i'm saying here i'm present i'm presently working as an assistant producer at fanaticus x is like this indie studio here in atlanta for a platforming game set to release like it's a, I'm applying for a, produ for a production position. Here's a direct piece of production experience that I'm doing right now that I think you could really use. And all right, I'm not going to tell you to lie to people because that's wrong. And also, more importantly, not efficient. Um, but 
you don't need to you don't need to actually be there's a there's such a thing as being honest to a fault right which is you know oh i'm working at activision and this is what i mentioned at the beginning of this presentation where it's like you know i'm working at this place but i'm not really doing too much like this is all i've done there's not much else to it no ring it out for everything you've got right like literally take its lunch money and then go back to its parents house and then take it take more right like ring out every last piece of credibility that you can get from whatever you're doing right now if you're a team lead on a project i can think of at least 10 different things you could be saying that all explain the same thing but make it sound like you're doing more right this isn't about whether or not you are being this is not this isn't about you being you know perfectly a very you're not being like totally honest you're not being like oh i'm to be straight with you this is what i'm really like you are trying to present the best version of yourself even if that best version only exists if you cut a few things out right lying by omission is okay in this particular instance now don't take it too far um nothing also uh nsa if you're listening to me i'm this is not legal advice um but all of this anything i'm saying here is something that i did and it's truthful but it's not necessarily like i'm not saying like how it really felt in the moment because i hated this job actually i despise this job but i gotta be happy about it because that's what they want to hear right so uh tip number three is make a template uh, and i'll show you what that is for a second but if you make a template i'm not even joking like just like this you see the bolded parts i edited that for every single application i ever sent out um if you do that this will take you like less than 15 minutes every single time. You'll cut your time down to like less than 10 minutes for every application. It's fantastic. Um, so do keep that in mind. I'll, I think I've got a link to this specific template that I'll probably send out to you guys later if you guys want that. Um, so I can give that up to you. Um, moving on, what do you mean I have to actually go talk to them? So if you've made it this far, you're... You've, congratulations, you've made it past the hardest point of the entire process, you've gotten an interview. Um, here are the general steps to that process. So congrats, you've sent in a resume and now you've waited like two weeks or so because you know, and you've been staying up late at night because you're worried they're ghosting you. And suddenly you get an email from a recruiter with a very cool email asking you for an initial phone call and saying that they're very interested in you. Congratulations. That phone call will be about 15 minutes and they're just going to be like, you know, who you at? Are you cool? Are you not cool? Um, it's really not. This this looks a lot scarier than it actually is. At the end of the day, it's just a nerd. It's, you are a nerd, yes, but like on the other end of the screen is also a bigger nerd because they make money being a nerd. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, so once you get past the initial phone call and everyone get pa gets past the initial phone call, trust me, unless you're like a huge asshole. Um, Behavioral interview will come up and they don't call it a, most people won't call it a behavioral interview. It'll just be like, hey, um, I'm gonna tie loop in my supervisor or another recruiter and we're gonna have a chat with you, 30 minutes. And that's just, this is your chance right here to take whatever you wrote on your cover, cover letter and expand upon it. Be like, yo, I'm actually cool. Here's what games I like. What do you like? Um, here's why they'll ask you stuff like, oh, what made you get into game development? Why do you like making games? such an easy question because i know you guys wouldn't be showing up here if there wasn't a really damn good reason right so as so long as you can vocalize that you are basically acing this section um then the test will come in if they like you right if they really like if they like your vibe they you pass the vibe check then the test will come programmers this this varies for everyone artists don't even have tests i think must be nice um but programmers everyone this is your hacker rank section you know you know the drill um nothing part yes logan uh I when I did my um, last interview, there was no behavioral interview. It was just a technical interview about questions yep. about like C++ and all the things that you're talking about. So yeah. it's a bit different. I like how you leave out the fact that the per the place you interviewed at was High Moon Studios at Activision. Well, now. Hey, hey. <laughs> I like how you don't gas yourself up for that. Um, also, yes, gas yourself up. Um, that's a huge thing. But for testing and stuff like that, this timeline is not universal. Every studio has its own thing going on. This is just a general timeline. But usually there's a test. Um, following the test, there will be a technical interview. Uh, and the technical interview is not, it can be a little like the behavioral interview, but the questions are less going to be, why are you making games? And more about how are you making games, AKA, 
Uh, I had a friend who is now working on Insomniac who got a technical interview that asked him, like, you're making a stealth game and you're making a cover system. How do you use a DFS? You all know what DFS is, right? Never mind. It's a it's a graph. It's an algorithm or something. I'm not a programmer, so I'm, I only know that off, off skimming off the top of my head. But they asked him, like, how do you use this to Im Im implement this thing? Um, and quite frankly, he got blasted on that on that question, but he followed up with, you know, generally saying like, well, I don't, I feel like I don't know how to answer this question properly, but here's how I think it would go down. And you get points for effort, by the way. Um, this is not like an exam. You do get points for effort. And, you know, he, again, he's working on Insomniac now, so he did, he did make it through. Uh, and then finally, you'll get the final call. Congrats. They like you. They really want you. They're willing to pay you for this. Congratulations, your recruiter is going to call you and you'll have like, you'll iron out the details. This is where you'll probably where you'll negotiate your pay at that point. And I'll get into that in a second. Um, but this process takes forever. This interview process can take anywhere from like less than a month to three months. Um, and if you, let's say you apply to something in, oh, I don't know, October, then you might get like your first two interviews during before Thanksgiving. And then after Thanksgiving, once everyone's on break, you might not hear back from them until like, January, and then you'll do your last interview, which is generally what happened to me. Um, so what do I do? I don't have any social skills. It's probably what a lot of you will be worried about. Um, and that is A-OK, -okay because they don't have social skills either. They're just, they, just have the, they just have the luxury of reading off a script. Um, so they don't have, an, suffice it to say, they don't really give a shit about ripping you apart. That's not really in their interest if they want to hire you, right? Um, generally, you look at this conversation as, I want to hang with this person and I'm going to be spending a lot of time with them. I'd like to just get to know who they are. It is for you to get to know them as much as they get to know you, right? So you ask them questions, turn it back on them. Never let them guess your second move, right? Um, so be like, you know, uh, they ask you a question, fire it right back. Like, why do you want to get into games? Oh, I did this. How about you? How do you feel about getting into games, right? Turn it back on them if you have to. Like, that's a very easy cop out. Um, be honest during the interview as well. Like. Don't be honest to a fault, like I said, but be honest in terms of don't outright lie to their face. People generally appreciate some self-awareness and honesty. Like if they if they ask you a question, don't try to bullshit it if you don't really know. If you really, really don't know the answer, just be like, yeah, I, I, honestly, I don't really think I, I can answer this one. Um, but can you explain to me how? Like give them a go get, like hit them with that go get them attitude, right? And generally people will give you points for that um, because an internship is not for you to actually be cracked. It's for you to learn. Um, that's It's like an extended job interview, really. Um, so they don't expect you to know everything walking in. In fact, you're going to have to retrain so much once you're actually there. Um, not knowing something is not a death sentence. Again, um, just have that can-do attitude and everything will be fine. And please, for the love of God, do not, you, if you can help it, don't just sit in silence because then that will let them make assumptions about you if you can, like, laugh or something, say something, anything, if you can help it. Like, just do something. Um, and for pay, always ask for a higher pay than what you want. That way you'll actually negotiate to what you need. Um, why are you here? Who are you, really? And this is, this is the part where it's like the mushy-gushy personal branding stuff that most people are like, uh. Um, but it's kind of important, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about it real quick. So this is... Personal branding is not, I'm not really going to talk about like the, here's how you should walk and here's how you should talk. You should always dress in black and you should wear silver chains. Um, it's not really about that. It's just more so this, if you're worried about an interview, the reason why is because you probably don't have a full understanding of if somebody asks you a question about yourself, do you really think you'd be able to answer on the spot, right? That's more important than anything else. This is what this slide is all about. Um, it isn't about what you wear, how you talk, or any of that. It's just more about, well, why am I working here? Why am I, what have I done so far? Do you know everything that you've done so far? Do you know how to talk about it, right? Do you know what you want? Do you know where you're going? If you don't, then this would be a good time to think about that. Um, because that is how you're going to guarantee passing those interviews. Um, we can talk drip later. If you can, if you want to ask me questions about drip, I guess you can. I'm not really all that good at it, but... Hey, sure, you could ask. 
Don't, don't say that. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that from somebody who's been wearing the CS the CS default outfit for the past four years. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. Um, no, nah, I love you, Logan. But yeah, and this won't come event. This won't be like an immediate thing. Like, be patient with yourself. For the love of God, please be patient with yourselves. Be generous. I, imposter syndrome is awful, and I've been there. I still feel it sometimes when I'm at PlayStation because, like, you know. I'm there talking to my manager and they just offhandedly mention like, oh, I've been working here for 20 years. Ha 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 ha. Your career is longer than me. That's crazy. Um, so please be, gen please be generous. Please be patient with yourselves. This stuff doesn't come like naturally to everybody. Um, what do I need to show? Confidence, passion, and drive. The usual stuff. Confidence is kind of the iffiest thing for most people. This doesn't mean you have to be a know-it-all jerk. This is really just... Do you know what you're capable of and do you know what you're do you know what you can and can't do? The can't do is important. You can say that you can't do something but you can also be okay with that, right? You can also say, "Yeah, I can't do this and I'm not that good at this yet." Right? That's perfectly fine. So long as you're okay with that. Passion I don't think I need to describe passion to y'all. I think y'all know what I'm talking about here. Um drive, right? How do you take whatever comfortable that feeling of being comfortable and all those things that you've done in this club so far and where you want to go and how do you package it up how are you going to get there right telling people people even if you don't know what the hell you're doing if you make it look like you know what you're doing trust me people are none the wiser most of the time right i mean look at me i am terrified right now speaking up here but i'm somehow doing it anyway um so there's that right once you get started it's kind of hard to stop right i'm probably going to collapse outside like once i'm done right <laughs> You're doing a great job. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then last, is this last? Probably last, yeah. Plugging into the loop. This is going to be the part that I think a lot of people are going to be like, oh, uh, networking is not optional here. Um, this is a tiny industry. This industry is like, I mean, look at, look at you guys here. See how small you are, right? Now think about, does Panther Hacker still exist? Is that still a club? What? Damn, what fuck? Oh, Shit, shit. Damn, I'm old. Okay. That club used to be like a thousand members, right? That's CS. That's a CS club, right? This, I I could maybe count like 30 to 40 in here, right? Not particularly large, but not that large, right? And over at VGDev, we're not that much different, right? Maybe we've got a couple more people, but that's it, right? You put us together, we barely reach, you barely reach like 100, 150, right? And that's in the whole city of Atlanta right? That's crazy. Now, think about that on a global scale. Like, this industry is tiny. I have met people that I've known. I've met people, like, in 2018 at SiegeCon at, like, this tiny little, like, mellow mushroom across the street from the convention center, and I'll run into them again later. That, like, I've run into them time and time again across the states when I go to conventions. Like, I'll go to e East Coast Game Dev in South Carolina. I met Zane there. I went to, I'm going to GDC. Guess what? He messages me. Oh, you're going to GDC. I'll be there. This man lives in Malaysia. Like, <laughs> like, you'll run into the same dudes over and over again. Trust me. And I know this is kind of like, this This might feel a little daunting because like, you know, you're all starting out. It's still student, it's student time. Trust me, I'm only, I only just got out of that like now. So it's still fresh for me too. Like, it's it's going to be a little daunting at first, but generally like, I mean, you, you can talk to people in this room, right? And generally you don't make a huge mess out of it, right? You can do that with people a couple, well, just a few years older than you. I mean, hey, like, I can, I, you know me now, so that's one, right? Um, so here's your game plan. First things first, congratulations, you're here. This is actually a huge part of your network, Panther Dev. This, look around you at all the people here. This is your tribe. This is, these are your homies. These guys are the people you're probably going to be entering the industry at the same time as, right? AKA people who are probably going to be able to get you that job when you're inevitably, when the industry inevitably turns over and you need another job, right? These guys are going to be the ones who, who are able to do that. They'll be in positions to do that at that point. You're not going to want to talk to the guy who's like 50 and has been doing this for 30 years and is about to retire because guess what? They're going to be retired by the time you get in there, right? It's not really all that useful going for those big fish right now, right? Technically, you guys are the biggest fish to yourselves. That's the important thing. Um, second thing, would be social media. Y'all have Twitter, so I don't need to talk about it. Um, Twitter is like game devs, like how to network. That's like the the hub. Although 
with the current situation with Twitter. I don't know how long that will last. Um, we'll see about that. But for the moment, Twitter is, for better or worse, the way that most people get to know each other. I've literally spent, I've spent a lot of time on Twitter just like, there are a lot of devs who will like post like, ask me anything. Those of you students who want to get into the industry, I'll find those people, I'll run into their DMs and I'll literally, I've like raw, I've raw DM them with like a resume and been like, hey, can you check this out? And like, I get rejected like 90% of the time and that's just going to happen. Like be ready to be ghosted and rejected. But you're not doing it for the 90% of people who are going to ghost you. You're doing it for the 10% of people who are actually gonna respond back and be like, here's why your resume is garbage. Let me show you how it's done, youngster. That's exactly what happened to me. Um, I ran into a, somebody from Riot and she was like, oh yeah. So, and then she wrote me like five paragraphs on how bad my resume was, which was the, the that's the resume y'all saw just now earlier, the two column one, that was it. Um, so if I could do that, trust me, y'all can, can put out your stuff too. Uh, yes. Not really a question that I have to make. I forget what it was, that one guy had like a presentation of 20 reasons why your, um, your pitch is garbage. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like. You'll get those. You'll like for every hundred, for every ninety people who reject you, you'll get one person who sends you that, and that will be honestly that'll make it worth it. Um, secondly, it will be local communities. So this is a local community right here. VGDev is a local community. Get to know some of the people there. If we ever do a, uh, if, if Hannah and Parker ever decide to do a uh, collab again, um, but also you know, who here knows about Atlanta Game Devs? Okay, okay, cool. Atlanta Game Devs is just a local meetup of a bunch of game developers like local to the Atlanta area that just meet up at like this retro arcade bar like every first Thursday of each month. What, what bar? Uh, it's uh, called My My Parents my Basement. Parents basement. Oh, yeah. Almost so lit. It's yeah. Going. Yeah, every first Thursday of the month. Um but they have another chain. It could be a few dudes in their 60s. We haven't seen any 60s dudes. Never mind. I stand yeah, corrected. Yeah. And Never then mind. sometimes there's a bunch of people from VG Dev and appear, and it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, the VG Dev homies will also be showing up. So if you want to get to know some of them, then yeah, they'll be they'll be there, just as frightened as you. Um, trust me, I've shuttled them before, right, Chris? <laughs> but um, and I was once one of those people myself. But yeah, so local communities are fantastic. Game Jams as well, who here did GGJ. Let's go, my homies. Um, game Jams are fantastic. Conferences. So there's SiegeCon, there's East Coast Game Developers Conference, which is coming up this April, actually, I think. Um, and that's in North Carolina. If y'all want to like grab a group of your peers here and go, that's a great place to go. I went when I was in Aurora, or not Aurora, fuck, it's Panther Devonoff, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like these these are great events. Just look into them and like see if they're worthwhile for you. These are great places for you to like meet people outside of just this Atlanta bubble, right? Because there's a, there's a wide world of people out there to meet. Um, GDC is kind of like the mecca of, of game dev conferences, game developers. Y'all have probably seen their YouTube channel with all the fancy ass talks from like Masahiro Sakurai and stuff. Um, but yeah, GDC, if you can afford it, go. It's pretty lit. Um, if you can't afford it, it's okay. You can wait until you're, you've gotten a job. Me, my first GDC is going to be next March. So I'm, I'm with you on that one. Um, but all of these come together to form your general game plan of where you should be going, what you want to be doing, right? Generally, just go out there, shoot your shot as many times as possible, and just make your name and face recognized, right? I remember guy I mentioned who is in Malaysia, he had, he... He's got a wild trick where he like he'll go up to every meetup and he'll dress up in like this tweed like maroon colored striped suit, right? And he'll always show up in that with like his tie is like adorned with like Zelda pins and stuff. He's like a short little guy, but like he is he always shows up looking like he came straight out of Victoria Air London. But guess what? It might be wild and a little a little little weird, but I can point him out in a room anywhere I go and I will know it's him. Right, stuff like that. Like, if I can recognize you after having met you twice, then you've probably done a good job, right? That's what you. That's generally what you want to be doing. Your next job is probably not coming from an application nine times out of ten in the industry. Maybe for your first job, perhaps, but after that, 
nine times out of 10, your next job is coming from somebody you know. Nine times out of 10, usually. Like, I know people who have jumped from Bungie to Riot to Sony, who I am working with right now, and is thinking about going back to Bungie. This industry is so small. Like, people hop across the pond all the time. Um, so, people of, speaking of that, people of interest to you, students, again, like I said, this is your tribe. When you meet another student, that's somebody who's going to be just as successful as you when you are inevitably getting into the industry, right? Um, entry level to mid developers, right? These guys, like me, right? Fresh out of college, we're still, we still kind of like feel it. We still know the struggle, right? We've only, it's still refresh for us too. So we're, we're way more likely to help you guys out than like say some like 50 year old dude who's been doing this for way too long, right? Those guys are ready to retire. They don't, they, they probably used like, they used punch cards to make games back then. Like I imagine. So like, they're not, they're not the best resources. For you guys right now, entry to mid-level developers, those guys are great. Um, we are still young and energetic and we'll want to help you. Um, and total beginners. Wow, that's crazy. To teach is to actually, that's teaching is how you get, like, that's how you get all the cloud. Um, case in point, where I am right now, um, doing this workshop, I guess. But, you know, in case in point, like, if you run into somebody who's totally new to this, and is really interested in getting, getting into it. Remember, you were there once too, and you probably have some answers that they'd want to know. So give them those answers, talk to them, and they'll. you don't know where they're gonna end up one day, right? And they'll probably remember you and they'll be like, oh shoot, you're that guy who like actually gave me a lot of help with this one thing. And who knows, they might be working at like Riot or something, who knows? Um, but case in point, make friends, not connections. This is, I can't stress this enough. Don't see people as just like, this is why people get intimidated, I feel like. People look at networking and they think, oh my God, I got to go and talk to this guy with a clinical attitude, firm handshake and all that shit. Firm handshake is nice and stuff, but like make friends, right? You're looking, you're going out there and you're trying to make actual connections that won't last like to the extent of I send you a LinkedIn friend request and maybe a, a, a message afterwards, right? I want to actually talk to you for the for like my foreseeable future. So you don't need to, you can meet a hundred people only to meet one. And that one is all that matters, right? That's the, that's the takeaway for this tip. Um, final tidbits, we're going to do a lightning round real quick. So let's just wrap this up real quick. So if you're working on a game, try to showcase it as often as you can. Who here is working on a game? Great. You have literally no reason to go out and show that stuff. It doesn't need to look good. It don't need to look good. That's kind of the point. People, if you're talking to game devs, they don't care if it looks good because they know that there's some crazy shit happening under the hood, right? That's what's important to them. A gamer is going to care about how good it looks. You're not talking to gamers, mostly. Um, as ATL game devs, again, great place to bring your laptop and just plop down and showcase your games. I've done that a hundred times before. A lot of people do that at ATL game devs. They'll just kind of sit down, grab a table, plop their game down, and people just wander around and play it. Um, Dreamhack and other conventions are also fantastic. Who's been to Dreamhack? Let's go. Yeah. So case in point, Dreamhack is like an esports tournament happening that happens in Atlanta, but that's in November, so it's not currently the season. But yeah, you can request for your game to be boothed. Also, game. This is if you take nothing away from this, please just take this link and copy it. Oh my God, game to, gamejobs.co is literally like the biggest cheat code ever because it is just a massive job posting aggregate site where you can just filter out like whatever you want. Like if you want production or programming, filter it. And then if you want an internship, boom, filter it. It'll list everything. It, this, if you just have this open on your computer during fall and just refresh it every week, this is, this is how you'll get all of those like positions open. Um, if you don't know what your average pay should be, look up others on Glassdoor. Uh, bottom line should be like 40 hours, $40 an hour if CA, bottom line. Like nothing lower than this. This is already pushing it in, in California. Georgia would be roughly like 34 to 32, roughly. Um, if you want a custom website, use Squarespace and Wix. For the love of God, making one from scratch, unless you're a web dev, will take way longer than just using Squarespace and Wix. It doesn't need to look pretty, guys. Just have a space for your games. When in doubt, ask people what they're working on because people love talking about what they do. Um, if you're ever at like a meetup or something and want to get to know somebody. Um, 
if you're ever stuck crying or trying to talk oh crying lamau i mean you could be crying when you do this that's fair actually yeah if you're ever stuck trying to talk to people at like a convention or whatever find somebody who's more social than you that you know grab them and then let them just drag you to all their conversations follow them like like that's what i did i had a friend who was just very outgoing and i was not outgoing as much as you might not uh, think i am i'm not anymore uh, but back then i was terrified of talking to people so i'd grab onto my more my more social friend daniel and i just let him kind of steer me through all the crowds and be like oh i love your game and i'd be like hey i love your game too <laughs> just kind of peek over his shoulder and that's how i'd enter a conversation it's a cheat it works um, many conventions will let you go for free if you sign up to volunteer. So, you know, GDC is super expensive. If you don't want to, if you want to cut cost, you can't afford it. Volunteer. Um, you'll have to do some volunteer work, but generally you have free reign for most of the convention. This goes for SiegeCon, this goes for ECGC, this goes for so many conventions. Um, but yeah, and that's a wrap. Feel free to message me on Discord or wherever. Any questions? This is time. Time. All right, Parker, inundate me. Oh, and here's my Discord, LinkedIn, and Twitter, I guess. Right. You will stay up there for questions. I'm ready. Yeah. Inundate me. With, bury me. Bury me. I'm ready. Uh, we will now start the Q&A sessions. I'm going to start off with my own, then we're going to go over the list on the Google Forms. Yep. Um, Actually, no. You have one on there? Fantastic. Uh, once we get through with those, if we have time, we'll do hand raised questions, OK? Yep. Okay, so I'm going to prompt with how should you include your portfolio with your resume? How should you include your portfolio with your resume? That is a great question. So typically, what we do is, so for most applications, you'll have like, I could probably, no, nah, it'd take too long. There'd be, usually there'd be like, um, a, there's a form that you'd fill out, right? Um, and usually how that would work is you'd have a space, they'd give you a space to put your resume in, they'll put a space for your cover letter, and also any other, usually there's a little link that you can post actually, where it's like portfolio link, and then you can just plop it in there. Me personally, I use like a Git, I host my website on github.io or GitHub pages for free and just kind of throw that monster of a link in there and let them deal with it. Um, but Typically, that is how you package it up. If you don't have that luxury, put that link on your cover letter and your resume. A case in point here, right here, if I hope you can see this, but it's blue, so boom, um, link. If you're a programmer, also put your GitHub, but yes. Okay. Next, we're on to Michael Clark. Yes, was the best way to present your skills on your resume when you don't have the relevant work experience? Michael, you ask the hardest questions. Damn. Um, cool. So that's going to be a little tough. So, so by relevant experience, I'm just going to assume that you mean, I'm going to assume the barest, like you have never worked on a You haven't worked on a game before. And if that's the case, please work on a game. Um, you're in Panther dev, please dedicate some time to work on a game. Um, if at all possible, there is yes, you can like embellish stuff, but you need something to embellish first before you can do that. Um, so work on a game, even if you don't think you're gonna make it very good, it doesn't matter so long as you work on something. Um, outside of that though, if you have worked on a game, Michael, if you're out there anywhere, um, then what I would recommend is think about what things you did, break down all the little tasks you did on the project, no matter how tiny and how insignificant they were, and think about how each of them relates back to what you, what position you want to apply for. If you're a gameplay programmer, then you want to be looking for Unreal experience followed by Unity experience, also C++ as your primary language. If not C Sharp, it's the next best thing. Um, if you're doing AI, then you probably, if you're doing AI programming, then probably Python would be a good one, right? Look for things that you've done on that. And if you haven't, you know what to do. Uh, you know how to shore up your resume on that front. Um, but yeah, I hope that answers your question. Next is Pascal Williams, or Wilson, Damn. sorry, Williams. not Williams. Williams? Not Mr. Williams. Damn. Damn. Uh, <laughs> yes, is more who you know or what you know? Who you know for sure. Who you know for sure. I don't know everything, even though that, that this presentation makes it sound like I know a lot of things. I don't know. Remember, I'm entry level, 
right? I'm still an entry level person compared to people who have been doing this for 30 years. What I know is a fraction of what they can do. So it is not what you know, it is who you know. How do you get in? And then once you know people, they can teach you or they can get you into positions where you can know more. Okay, next is from Min. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Um, how, can you sh how can I share my work to the people in the industry without revealing my IP? Where can I learn designing in Unreal? Sorry, say that again? So the, it's two questions, technically. How can I... How can I share my work to the people in the industry without revealing my IP? I am assuming by IP, you don't mean your, your you know, physical location on the internet um, and more so in terms of intellectual property. Um, if you are thinking about if your game, say, is like on the cusp of being announced, then, you know, you can say something like unreleased project. Here's what I did. You don't have to go into details on like what the game is. In fact, Look at this. If you look at this resume, there is not a single detail on what any of these games are. You just see these names and you're like, what the hell is a Lunasia, right? I'm not telling you what these games are. I'm telling you what I did on these games. Um, so if you want to conceal your intellectual property, you can definitely do it like that. What was the second half? Where can I learn designing with Unreal? Um, I did it by doing this, like, there's, you typically epic games does like a boot camp or like has some level of like they do these like things every now and then but i did like a boot camp for like seven weeks that honestly i hated with every fiber of my being but uh that got me into it if anything if you really want to learn straight up like everything in this industry just open it up have a game idea ready and just start plunking away. Think about what you want to do. And then from there, be like, oh, I need a menu. Okay, how do I make an un a menu in Unreal? I need to make a player controller. How do I make a player controller in Unreal? You will learn way better by doing that and messing up and figuring it out than by just kind of going through a course and paying out, your, out the wazoo for that. Okay, next is Hannah Weiser. She asks, what happens if you don't get an interview? So there are a couple of things that we would need to know about this situation, right? So assuming that you have maybe gotten, let's say you haven't gotten a response yet, it's been two weeks. Then at this point, you're within your right to contact whatever, whatever place that you, um, whatever place that you applied to and ask them for a, a follow-up. It's a mixed bag. It's, it's, I'll know it's what, whether or not you get a response, we you won't know. It's just a flip of a coin at that point. Um, if they haven't responded back to you in a month, then assume that this position is going nowhere and move on to the next one. Um, if you have been rejected from something and you haven't like gotten anything like that, follow up to the recruiter and ask them, hey, and of course, only do this if you have a recruiter's email address and not just some automated thing. But if you have a recruiter's email address at this point and they've responded to you, then follow up with them and say, hey, um, I'm sorry to hear that you know I wasn't selected to move forward in the next phase of interviews. Is there anything that I could do better next time um, that would make it that would make my next my next attempt um, next year a little bit better, right? And that will make sure that they remember you and that will also give you something to work with moving forward. All right, next is Chase O'Brien. He asks, are you excited for Recon? Answer, yes. Then you spend five minutes <laughs> plugging Recon. Chase, I'm gonna fucking kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Chase is Chase is an officer at VG Dev. There is there's a convention happening. There's a club convention happening at GT right now where it's like it's gonna be a very large like conference with a bunch of vendors and booths and stuff. It'll be fun. Show up if you want. There, I've done my job. <laughs> Yes, Hannah. Lit. Okay. There we go. Eric Kelly asks, what can you do to make yourself more presentable slash marketable for indie or freelance work? Is it more or less the same as when doing so for contract and corporation work, or is it different? So that is where things get a little dicey. So indie is a lot of the times, and this is not going to be very fun to hear, indie is a, a, an area of dev where if you're a college student, it is highly, highly unlikely you're going to find any indie studio who, is, who has a job opening. Because you need to understand how indie studios are formed, right? They're formed because a bunch of 
a bunch of people who are way more skilled than us um, came out and have worked in industry for a while and said, hey, I've got this cool idea for a game. Hey, you working across the hall from me, you want to join me? Oh, what about you? And they'll band together. They'll find only the people that they need. They'll go make that game. And then they'll just keep doing that over and over again until you know they eventually disband or something else happens, right? Case in point, even the larger indie studios like Supergiant Games or something, they're still at their core, very tight knit. And the only reason they would want more people to join them is if they have like, if they seriously are expanding hard, um, then you would be considering like double A almost like, like Bungie. Um, but to answer your question in a more general sense, if you want to make yourself visible to indie devs in general, um, of course, same advice, put yourself out there. But in this case, put your personal projects out as hard as you can, shill them. If you're working on a game in Panther Dev or in wherever you are, right? If you're working on something, make it with the intent of finishing it. Not just like, we're not talking about, oh my God, I had this great idea. Um, I'm finished, I'm, I finished the core game loop and I've got a couple assets in and man, this looks great. That's fine on a resume, but if you're trying to pander to indie and trying to break into that side of things, you want finished, polished projects. You want to spend time really honing what is the game that you are trying to make here um, and shilling that as often as you can. So case in point, Hannah on Lightbreak showing up to uh, DreamHack. Let's go. Um, and also with my own game at, at DreamHack at the same time, like, we had a project that we think was ready to show and went out there and just, there you go. We're putting our names out. People will find us. People will talk to us. Um, and I know like there are going to be moments where people will walk up to you and be like, Hey, I remember you. I'd like to help publish your game or something. Um, and nine times out of 10, you'll probably be like, what the hell? That's a little sus, but you know, stuff like that does happen. Um, just so long as you're keeping your eye out for opportunities and not just letting them come to you, but hunting them down. Um, it's really just the same old, same old. Um, a very easy trick to get into indie, which is my current plan, which is to hop into AAA game dev first. And then once you have a network large enough and skills and have a skill base big enough to sustain it, then jump into indie um, because indie requires a whole lot of money and you will not be able to get that for a little while unless you do like a Kickstarter, which is very risky. But yeah. Next question is Sen Juan. Yes. When it comes to the games in your portfolio, should you use the full game or a demo slash scaled down version of the game? Depends. Um, since most of us are students in this room, typically it's whatever the hell you can get your hands on that looks the best. But you know, in terms of can you how, how do you make it like if you're if you've got the luxury of being able to decide, typically a small demo would be fine because Again, that is if so long as you advertise that that is a demo, then people will generally, you know, look at that and be like, okay. And that also speaks well of you because you had the wherewithal to condense your game and make a whole new build just for people to see. That speaks to a level of foresight that not a lot of people will have. Okay. Next one. Yep. I'm not going to try to pronounce your name. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do it like that. I know. I did do wrong. I'm sorry. Hakeem. Hakeem? Okay. Yes. Um, what made you stand out from other potential producers applying for positions? Damn, good question. Um, <laughs> shit. Well, good on you for taking advice on throwing questions back at me. Um, what made me stand out? Well, I would personally, I would say that typically in production, it would be A, I've led teams that a lot of students wouldn't have really like I the scope of the teams that I've led is not necessarily like it's not it's not common for people to lead teams of like 60 to 90 people um and to have you know seen through an entire semester doing so and that plus you know I have experimented with a lot of different PMing software I have like I generally had an interest in just every new game I do I'd have something new to show so if, for instance uh, if I worked on, you know, let's look at this for a second. So while Burger Snock, I use Trello, Lunacia, I use Trello, but for side by side, I switched to ClickUp, which is the equivalent of Jira, which Jira is like kind of the industry standard in a lot of places, which is awful, but it is. 
Um, and so the closer I could get to industry standard stuff, the more intelligent conversations I could have with people instead of just, oh, I really like to work on games and I love your games and I've played Spider-Man and I think it'd be really fun to work on Spider-Man. It's more like, oh yeah, like I'm actually curious, like what did you, how did Spider-Man, how did, how did you guys change your production pipeline for Spider-Man Miles Morales? Like, did you switch to anything different? Like, how did you use, um, how did you use buckets and priority systems in terms of like, like using that jargon, seeking out that information that is industry relevant and putting myself in there um, as a student and trying to mimic that as much as I could. I think that was one of the biggest things. Hmm? Okay, that's it. Any other questions? Any brave souls? Yeah. Yes. Uh, speaking of resume, what's a, what does a T shaped producer mean? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, so that was my um, that was what that riot producer. Um, she told me she was like, if you have a, if you have an, a, you don't need an about me, but if you do, try this. And basically, T shaped producer just means like T shaped just means. Think about it like the straight line on a T, that's your main thing. I'm a producer, um, that is my trade. And the T is just adjacent things that I can do. For instance, I'm a, like, I'm a generalist and I'm, I'm a pretty big generalist. Like I can compose music, I can design, I've done design documents, I've level designed, I've done a lot of that stuff. I have experience writing, I did a lot of writing um, and have been published. Like I've done a lot of skills, but T-shaped is just a really easy way to just say, I can do this really well, but I can also do some other things that are also pretty cool. Yes. I could have seen that on like your resume. I thought it was the inside of the resume. No, 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 no. I'm not that, I, I like to gamble, but I'm not that risky. Yeah. That um, ATL game devs said they made it my parents' basement, the one in Avondale. Yeah, Avondale, uh, yep. Yep. Every show up there every Thursday. It's actually happening. Like what? What day is today? Let's Friday, see. Friday, Friday. It's Friday. It's okay. Not always, not always. Yeah, it's not always on every Thursday, but usually. Um, Hannah, you're in it, right? Can you send the the server link? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Or Parker, you're in it too. Yeah. You're in it too. You can send it. Um, but yeah. Um, join it. It's pretty sick. Yes. Um. So if you want to like be a producer, like what kind of skills would you have to develop and what kind of roles would you go for depending on what company you want to apply for? Skill-wise, project management, um, anything in terms of communication, like have you, do you know how to communicate with different people from different disciplines? Um, AKA, I can talk to an artist and talk to them about remeshing and, you know, talk to them about doing a, like baking UVs and stuff like that. And I can turn around to a producer, a programmer and ask them, you know, what's the turnaround time on this script that you're working on? Um, in terms of, you know, where you are on the bug on, on these bugs that we're tracking, right? Like, can I speak to them in that term? But also just, are you familiar with any kind of project management software? Like Trello is a great place to start. Most of you have probably used it. Trello is one of them. It's actually used in the industry these days. It's getting more popular, but you know, ClickUp, Jira, Monday, uh, Asana, and you know, other similar things like that. Um, Microsoft Excel is also a plus, but you don't really, it's not a hard requirement, but yeah. And um, I guess my other question is uh, expanding on what you said. Um, were you like wanna when you're talking about like being able to talk to artists or programmers or people with different proficiencies? How like knowledgeable would you have become on either of those to like be able to talk to those kinds of people? So what I like to say is, you don't need to be an expert. You just need to. For me personally, my personal philosophy is I like to have my hands in all those pies. So when I was a student, I would just work as like. Well, I've worked on, I've made music before. I've done narrative stuff. I've, I've, I can code. I graduated from GT. I'd hope I can code. Um, not like you, Logan. Don't look at me like that. Um, but <laughs> you know, I can, I can do all these. I've done these things before, which means I have a much more intimate knowledge of. I've, I can see it from the other side, right? Getting those orders from on high, right? But also in general, have a conversation with somebody who, like, if you're a team lead right, on something, any of you team leads out there, this is a really easy trick. If you don't know what to say and how to scope out a pipeline or like a schedule or anything like that, or you don't know the requirements for something, find the one person on your team who is probably the person who's going to be doing it and ask them because they will teach you what you need to do, what you need to know to communicate with them, um, if that makes sense. Generally, just immerse yourself. But yeah, any other questions? Yes. Do you have any advice on uh, transferring to Adobe Creative? 
I know it's not super <laughs> relevant, so I didn't. Like no, no, no. I, f- I, f- I feel you, brother. Um. I hope I hope to God that you are staying in con you are watching that transfer equivalency table as hard as you can because they will fuck you over. Yeah. Um I spent my first two I've spent my semesters here at GSU scared as hell. Um I'm assuming you're on either the transfer pathway or just transferring it normally. I had a transfer pathway, but it kind of ran out because I couldn't schedule my classes right. That's fair. If that's the case, just 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 look at that transfer equivalency because you do not want to be fucked over. That's my biggest piece of advice for you, bro. Um outside of that, anything else? Um, yes. Follow up on that. How many semesters did you spend here? Two. Two. I was president for one and a half. It was a weird. Aurora was in a rough state at the time. RSE Sean. Oh, bro, Sean. Mystery man. Where is he been? Where? Yeah, where has he been? I hope Sean was like the first president of this club. I have drinks with him in December, and he disappeared again. Bro, he literally like handed me my career and then walked out. <laughs> I actually can't even like, bro. I I never even got a chance to thank him. Yeah. That I've ever worked on? Oh, great question. Um, well, it would probably be my most recent game. Willow, let's go, Chris. Oh, it was like this. If y'all went to DreamHack, y'all probably saw it. But it was like a roguelike. Um, it was a roguelike. Um, uh, roguelike Enter the Gungeon like game. Um, so like very shoot 'em up vibes um big on art lots of pixel art big music music team let's fucking go um but it was a really large team and like honestly the fact that we managed to get as much done on it as we did i'm pretty damn proud of that it was like 98 people at peak i think or no 120 something people at peak and that was like a nightmare but yeah yes jed I mean, those of you who are at again, yeah, those of you who are at GGJ would probably know it's um, it was this rhythm game I did at GGJ with a couple other fellas, um, who it was like this conversation rhythm game. The theme was really weird, like it was roots, so you're getting to the root of a conversation, but you're doing rhythm games to like figure out what you what is actually happening. Yeah, um, it was pretty good. Check it out. It's on itch soon to be. Peter will probably post it somewhere. Yeah. Any other questions? It's also on my laptop. Oh yeah, if you want to, if you want to hit up Logan. Also, shout out to Logan. He is an incoming intern at. Probably, yeah. You should. You probably should. Yeah. Okay. I have been doing game development for like six years. I'm currently doing a graphics programming internship. Not currently, in the future, in like three months. Doing a graphics programming internship at High Moon Studios in Activision. Um, so yeah. If you have any questions on programming, he's like the best person to ask yes. in this room. If you have questions about getting into the industry with programming, um, that's yeah. him. That's all him. Go hunt him down. Get in his DMs. Do all that. Um, but yeah. Any other questions? Any other brave souls? Otherwise, I can. We can. We can set you free. I have a question. Yes. Whenever I'm play testing your game. Why do you try and kill me in the Because <laughs> the players are stupid. You're right. <laughs> See, you gotta, you gotta like let them play their Listen, game design. Game design. Uh, no, we'll, 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 we can let's let's take this out. So see me in my office. <laughs> yeah, Hannah, it's all yours. Happens. That's the best part, though. You know, what's up? Any non weird questions, gamers? I'll be. I'll still be around for non weird questions. Yes. Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Graduated and I'm. I'm drowning. Uh. Yeah. It doesn't get easier, but it does get more fulfilling. So I can. I can tell you that. Any other questions? I saw a couple of hands go up for a sec. Is that a hand or? You mentioned that the industry is small. Yes. Yeah. What does that like mean? Like people that are staff or something or no? So it's really because as the more the more as you stay in the industry for longer, you will your senior position and the knowledge that comes with it begins to snowball. 
because there are a million entry level people like all of us here who want to make it in and that's the bottleneck but once you're in that that knowledge you have and that skill and experience that's there is not a lot of people like you at this point who have reached this point in the industry now so at that point it's less about you going out to people and more like other people are like yo i remember working with you you want to come join my new studio that i just did um they can just do that absolutely that's how that's no moon was formed <laughs> yeah any other questions any other questions yes jed unity or on unity or unreal depends are you a programmer or not well no i mean well, I prefer Unity because I'm not a programmer. <laughs> so if you're a programmer, go for Unreal. But if not, then Unity. Any other questions? Going once, going twice. So, okay, we're... Okay, go on. I'll, I'll set you free. Do you think, Hannah? Oh, cool. Okay. Oh. Um, he didn't... We, we turned into Q&A, so we didn't, like, properly applaud. But thank you, Yoon. He's he's very good, very helpful. I don't want to like. Well, you put your Discord. Hit him up if you have questions or you need fight. like help. He's very good at communicating that kind of stuff. Um. So yeah. Oh, hell! Uh, two one two one two one two he's, one. Really, he's in our remember. server though, so you can find. Yeah, I'm. If you can remember sure. Reverie Nest, you can find him. I'm a fossil, so you can you can find me. <laughs> um okay but yeah so remember next week prog wait give me like 45 more seconds okay um progress update number two is next week remember get all your stuff to your team leads and stuff so yeah yeah everyone feeling good about progress update number two <laughs> yeah okay cool yeah what Something where will this super helpful changed. presentation be so i can look at it Later. Uh, put it in links, I guess. Ah, oh, thank you. I think put it in links. This will be in links. If it's not, <laughs> officers yell at me. Somebody yell at me. I have pea brain memory, so yeah, peanut head. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah, woo! Ow. Progress update number two is next week. Everyone, get excited, get hyped. I'm so excited. Thank you, you once again, and yeah, workshop number one. Something. Bye, Twitch. Bye, Bobby.